Happy New Year, Levi. Wow. Happy New Year. Uh. Oh, baby, you've been making me crazy. The way my heart has been racing. Hey, guys, so I'm going to thank you. I'm going to thank you. I'm going to thank you. What is up guys? Welcome back to the channel and first of all, Happy New Year! If you're new here, my name is Adrian and I like making videos revolving around my life which basically means a lot of self-help videos reflecting on past mistakes because trust me, there are a lot. Which is no surprise what this next video is about. Hey there buddy! Okay. <sighs> Everybody knows what it's like to make New Year's resolutions. It's that time of the year where you're given a fresh start which is beautiful because maybe your last year wasn't as great as you expected. But one of my favorite things about the New Year is that this is a time where your slate is wiped clean. Something new is in the air, motivation is peaking and despite all your past failures from the previous year, this is your year because New Year, New You, right? Yeah, probably not. I can't tell you how many times I told myself that this year is going to be different. I'd set all these amazing goals, whether it was to make a new video every single week or to start that business that I've always been wanting to start. Something would always come up, and by the time I knew it, it was December 1st. Bruh. Every single year, I'd sit down, write these goals I had, these New Year's resolutions, only to fail every single year. And that's when I realized that Insanity is doing the same thing over and over again, expecting different results. This year, coming to 2023, I wanted to do something a little different, and today, I want to share with you guys four steps that I'm taking to reflect on my past and plan for the future. Failures can be a pretty hard thing to accept, and believe me, I know because I've had a lot of failures. So as uncomfortable as it was, the first step had me write down all the goals that I had for 2022 that I failed to accomplish. We're not just doing this for the sake of it, but to determine why I didn't accomplish them. So let's take a look. All right, so the first goal that I had in 2022 that I failed to accomplish was to make 20,000 subscribers, to gain 20,000 subscribers. No, God! Ah. Save $100,000 in the bank, complete 44 books, have a core group of friends at church, have a core group of friends in general, and have at least earned $10,000 in, in, this, in this business that I want to start. It's clear I had no idea how to make realistic goals. Like, bruh, 20,000 subscribers, I'm like 19,000 19, subscribers off. And I don't even want to get into goal number two with that $100,000 in the bank. But a wise man once said that the only real mistake is the one in which you fail to learn anything from. Or something like that. It's by Albert Einstein. Bruh. So as embarrassing as these failures may be, they did highlight a pattern. Number one, all these goals were only achievable by my ideal self in an ideal environment. And if you've seen my previous videos, my vlogs, and you know that 2022 was a pretty challenging year for me. The second reason I didn't accomplish these goals were because all of them were driven by what's and not by why. But very, very few people or organizations know why they do what they do. Which brings me to point, or as you might say, step number two. Every great goal is driven by a great why, a big why. But people tend to confuse between whys and whats. So I read this book called Start With Why in 2022, which basically talks about how every goal, every business, every dream is composed of three layers, which is what Simon Sinek, the author of the book, calls the golden triangle. These three layers have a why, a what, and a how, which is essentially why you want to achieve this goal, how you plan to achieve this, how you plan to achieve this, and what achieving this will look like. Taking the concepts from the golden circle, I went ahead and made all my plans for 2023. So firstly, I made three columns, the why column, the how column, and the what column. In the first column, I wrote out all my goals for 2023, but in terms of why. 
For the sake of time though, I'm just gonna go over three of them. So firstly, one of my goals is to be a person who provides value. Number two, I wanna understand the world better. And number three, I wanna create a stable home environment. In the second column, I wrote out how I would achieve each goal. All right, so the special thing about actually starting with why is that you'll soon realize that there's actually more than one way to achieve a goal. So for example, um, in order to be a person who provides value, I wanted to achieve this by making YouTube, vi YouTube videos because I felt it was like the most feasible and most enjoyable way. But I could also maybe provide value by starting a not-for-profit not organization or maybe volunteering at like an old folks home or something. Same why, but different how. The third column is where you think about the outcomes of these whys. For example, making honest videos that educate and inspire could firstly get me 10,000 subscribers by the end of the year. Or it could also create a passive income stream. There are so many different ways in which making honest videos that educate and inspire could manifest. And that's the special thing about starting with why. When you're focused on the why, the outcomes just naturally come. Anyway, the last step of this stage is to categorize each goal. So for the first goal, I categorized it as YouTube. The second, self, uh, self development. And then the third is just family. I don't know about you, but I'm the type of guy to have like these serious sports of motivation. I wake up every single day at 6 a.m. for a week. I read my Bible, I journal, I work out, I be on the ball with my YouTube stuff. I just be on the ball in general and that is my ideal self. Then there are days where I'm just struggling to do anything. I just want to be in bed all, single, all day. I want to watch Netflix. I just want to chill and well, that's my shit self. I wrote down all my goals I have for 2022 in step number two and then I categorized them. But instead of just leaving them as such, I went on to make two additional columns, the shit you and the ideal you columns. In the ideal me column, I wrote everything that the ideal me would do to accomplish each goal. And in the shit you column, the shit me column, I wrote, well, everything the shit me would do, which is the bare minimum. So for example, while the ideal me will make one video every single week, well, the shit me will make one video every two weeks. And while this may seem sad at first, one video every two weeks is better than one video every six months. Now taking all the things that the ideal me would want to accomplish, I went down and I wrote how long it would take me to accomplish each task. But then taking the shit me into consideration, I doubled this time. This gave me the realistic time I would take to accomplish each goals on a daily basis and maybe even a weekly basis. Being a dad for the last nine months has taught me more than anything about the importance of prioritization. So I read a book a while ago called Make Time. And in this book, the author talks about this productivity tip where he creates a highlight of the day. So what he means by this is that instead of just blindly following a to-do list, he just chooses one activity for the day that he has to complete. And this basically just encourages us to be intentional with the few productive hours that we have in a day instead of just switching between seemingly urgent but unimportant tasks. The idea is to focus on achieving that one thing you have to get done in order to call this day a success. Well, there you have it guys, my four steps to reflect on the past and plan for the future. And together, we made plans to avoid past mistakes that aligned with our whys, were realistic and were achievable. Anyway, I love you and I'll see you next week if I'm my ideal self and I'll see you in two weeks if I'm my shit self.